Yes, indeed. Shield M2.0 is here, ladies and gentlemen. For this video, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of an overview of the MMP Shield platform in general and explain to you the perks and benefits of this new 2.0 series. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. So I just wanna start out with some basic stuff. This, this right here is my old Smith & Wesson M&P. Uh, this is the 1.0 version of the Shield. It was introduced in 2012, took the concealed carry market by storm because it was a really neat entry into the pocket pistol market. We, we're talking something, a gun that's really slim, less than one inch wide, which is really desirable, super lightweight, a 3.1 inch length barrel in the nine and 40 caliber platforms. And what really set this gun apart was not the fact that it was small and light, but the fact that it was really shootable. And as a result, by 2015, over 1 million, 1 million of these little babies in some various form of configuration were sold. Pretty awesome, right? That's a pretty, that's a pretty awesome thing. And, and, and this has been my carry gun for years now, and I absolutely love it. But what can you do to make something better, right? That's what Smith is always asking. And so when they looked at the 2.0 platform, they thought, hmm, what can we do to a firearm that's going to make it even better, aside from the normal things that we know and love about the shield? And so here you have it. Behold, the new 2.0 shield. Now, the two major differences that you will find with this particular gun over the 1.0 are two factors that shooters really, really care about. That's grip and trigger. Everything comes down to these things when it comes to shootability. You know, these little guns are very, very, they're very, very capable. This is not the type of firearm you're gonna stand on the line at Camp Perry shooting bullseye at 50 yards. No, you could. I mean, you could if you wanted to. But because this type of firearm and generally pocket pistols or concealed carry pistols have a shorter sight radius, it makes it a lot more difficult to see any errors in your sight picture. So that's not specifically what they're designed for. So, the aspect that we really care about in concealed carry is how well we can hang on to that gun and how well we can squeeze the trigger to get a shot off quickly and accurately. That's what it comes down to, right? And so that's what they focused on the shield. Let's talk about the trigger first. The original M1.0 <laughs> shield had, uh, how can I say this? A trigger that had a bit of roll to it. It was like, kind of like a little, like mashed potatoes or a little mushy. And a lot of people don't appreciate that in a trigger. I myself enjoy a trigger with a lot of roll in it. Uh, if you're a revolver shooter, you probably like this a lot. But if you focus a lot of your time on striker fired pistols, you are probably infatuated with what everyone else is infatuated with at the moment, which is the reset. And what we mean by reset is as, I'm gonna show you, show you guys clear here, no magazines. Trigger reset means that as you squeeze the trigger, it goes bang. And instead of letting your trigger finger fly off the face of the trigger and squeezing again, what you're gonna do is you're going to stop and reset it only as far as it needs to go in order to make everything happen inside the trigger mechanism, the sear and all that good stuff so that you can squeeze the trigger again. It makes for a lot faster and sometimes smoother trigger pull for a lot of people. And this is how you can get really, really fast, repetitive splits, shot to shot splits. So a lot of people really like that. One of the things that they didn't care so much about with the original M&P 1.0 shield was the fact that this reset wasn't as, it wasn't as easy as to detect. And with this new development, the engineers changed this M&P shield trigger so that now not only can you feel this reset, click, you can also hear it. So it's tactile and audible. The other feature about this particular trigger system is that it's crisp. That means that as you squeeze the trigger, you're gonna feel that take up and then you're gonna feel that tension. And instead of a lot of roll, a smooth like movement through something long, you're just gonna feel it break. And that is a desirable trait for a lot of shooters. They really like this style of trigger. They feel that they shoot it better. And so with the 2.0, that is basically what they've done on the internals so that it feels a lot like a lot of other striker fire guns and the guns that they're familiar with. The other main difference here is in grip texture. This texture here is much more aggressive than on the original shield. It's not something that is you'll notice so much to the eye, but it's definitely something you'll notice 
as you feel it. And what's great about this texturing is it not only fills the palm swell area, but it's also on the front of the grip, the front, and as well as on the side panels. And this allows you to have texturing anywhere your skin is gonna make contact with this grip. Very, very important because you wanna be able to hang on to it. <laughs> now, a lot of people, they like a smooth grip because they think it feels really good, but if you've ever had your hands get wet or a little bit sweaty, uh, you'll notice that things slip around a little bit. I even find this happens when my hands get cold. For some reason, my, my skin seems to feel really smooth when it gets cold. So that combined with the fact that it's a little harder to grip the gun makes it harder to get a good purchase. But because of this texturing, I not only feel it in the back, but I feel it in the front where I can control it and then also where my support hand meets the grip just like so. Very, very, very nice. <laughs> so grip and trigger are the two major standout features, but it, wait, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Not only do they make modifications to these two components of the Shield platform, they also make it available in a lot of different configurations. So you can get this in nine millimeter and 40, as well as with a thumb safety or without a thumb safety. And if you hadn't noticed this little red part right here on the gun, it also has an option where you can purchase it with an integrated Crimson Trace laser. This is really cool. If you're familiar with the M&P Bodyguard series, this is something that you'll notice. This is a really, really cool way to set up a laser. It's one of my favorites because it's so easy to reach. And being on the shield, it's just another great option. Not only can you reach it with your trigger finger, even if you've got short little stubby fingers like me that desperately need some new nail polish, um, you can also reach it with your support hand thumb. So you have two possible ways that you can access this laser and it has a steady stream and then also a pulse. So you have click it once for steady stream, click it twice for that pulsating stream, and then click it one more time to turn it off. So if you're looking for a firearm with an integrated laser, this is a great option. There's also the option for those standard three dot sights, those white dot sights, or you can also upgrade to the Night Sight version as well. Again, a lot of the same standard things that you know and love about the Shield, the Armonite finish, the fact that you get two magazines, I'll even show you those. Um, you get a nine millimeter, you get a seven round magazine that is flush with the bottom of the gun. This is the way I personally carry it on my body because I want the grip as short as possible. And as you can see, it's not a problem with my short hands. <laughs> and then I use the eight round magazine with the a little extender grip for my backup magazine. But a lot of people find that they need that additional additional little length because they have bigger paws than I do. So lots of different options, lots of different configurations. And again, the two primary benefits to an already great gun is an improved trigger and of course that grip texture all the way around. Love it, right? Did I miss anything? I think I got everything on there. <laughs> so let me know what you think about the new 2.0 shield and uh, if you're gonna go out and get one. If you have a shield, let me know what you like about it down below as well, if you have any interest in checking out the new versions. You know, I, uh, I'm, it was one thing I was really curious about with this edition of the laser, I went ahead and took it, both my old carry gun and my new carry gun, <laughs> downstairs on my postal scale in my office. And little fun fact, um, on my scale, both guns weighed exactly the same at one pound, 2.6 ounces. Again, I don't know if my scales are calibrated right, but they're equal, they were the same. And so I was curious if this additional laser would add a little weight to the end of the gun, but it's absolutely the same. The Shield is one of my absolute favorite, favorite carry guns out there. And the reason being is that it just, you know, when you talk about a gun fitting your hand well, this one, this one is just magic for me. I have smaller hands and I feel like I can get such a good purchase on it. And because you have an 18 degree grip angle, being that 1911 girl that I am at heart and starting out on 1911 platform in that style of firearm, I really feel the ergonomics of this gun really work in my favor. And so a lot of times when these smaller handguns, they, they tend to kick a little bit more, they're a little bit harder to line the sights because of that short sight radius, it's harder to be accurate, the trigger might be a little bit too difficult. And uh, this, <laughs> this gun actually feels like it shoots like a full-size gun versus the actual package that it's in. So it's one of my absolute favorites. Will there be one available without the laser, Joel asks? 
Yes, there is. There are lots of SKUs available. If you go to Smith & Wesson's website, smith-wesson.com, there's a huge, like, beautiful photo of the new shields up there. And there are lots of different SKUs from no thumb safety to night sights to laser to thumb safety, lots of different configurations. So you can check it out in both nine millimeter and 40 calibers. Are current Shield magazines compatible? I believe so. With the other launch of the 2.0 platform with the new Compact, those magazines are compatible, so I would imagine these are as well, but I will double check to make sure. I love my M&P 2.0 5 inch barrel as a range gun, most accurate gun I own. Yes, can't wait to get the Shield 2.0 for a carry option. Your, your 5 inch gun needs a little friend. That's right. <laughs> Can we expect to see a subcompact M2.0? One of the uh, things that Smith & Wesson came out with last year when we talked about coming out with a 2.0 platform is an extension of a lot of the lines. I don't know, I'm not in the, I'm not in the secret scroll part of the world. <laughs> So I don't know exactly what's going on at Smith & Wesson in the engineering department, but I do know that R&D is constantly in consideration. So maybe we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> when will they be available in stores, Jason asks. They are available now. They are available now. Uh, you can make orders for them. Uh, one of the neat things about the recent launches that Smith has gone through is instead of the old classic, hey, we have a new gun, you can get it next year. Um, <laughs> they're actually available. So that's a really, really cool thing. And if for some reason your dealer doesn't have one or doesn't know about them, send them to the Smith & Wesson website, have them to talk to their distributor and get one in on order. So again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Have a great day and be safe and have fun. Later.